Hey everybody, today I'm gonna talk about how to make the ray stitch on this machine. Um, this machine is brand new, I've only had it for a couple days, so I'm kind of fine tuning it and also making it stitch and trying to share videos of what I'm doing with everyone. So um, I hope you can follow along. I know I make long videos, I'm sorry, but hopefully you guys can learn something from us. So today I wanna to talk about after you get this machine, this machine is not really for beginners, okay? It's not. So you know how to chain stitch. You get this machine and you get it up and running and you start chain stitching. Okay, then you wanna add this spool in here. And I don't have anything on the top yet. This is just two threads. So I'm making a ray stitch today. So I wanna talk about and show you guys how to do this ray stitch, which is really pretty, um, makes nice uh, designs. And here specifically, I have um, green thread on this spool and I have black thread coming up from below for the chain stitches. So that is called the ray stitch. I know there's other names for it, um, but it's really, really cool looking. And this is one of the five stitches that this machine can do. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to kind of get that going. Um, but this video assumes that you know how to do regular chain stitch, uh, stop and start thread, and that as this is a new machine, you're oiling it properly and breaking it in. And I'm also um, gonna talk about how you get this done. And then in the middle of me making this video, I decided that I didn't like how my black uh, Mauser Silk Rayon was stitching. So I, um, I stopped and I fine tuned my um, machine a little, smoothed out my notch, to get this end result of better stitching. So I'm gonna try to put that together into a separate video, um, which would be either new or vintage machine that you find. You need to smooth out your thread path um, and fine tune your machine, either new or vintage. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, if you're having trouble with the videos, try to go to my YouTube channel and just go in chronological order because I have another video that talks about taking this machine out of the box. And then I have now today I'm making another video to talk about fine tuning your machine, whether it's a vintage machine or a brand new machine. Um, and then in this video, I'm going to continue on talking about how to do this ray stitch and how I got it going. Okay. Thanks for watching. Good morning, everybody. So I wanted to pick up with another video about the operation of this machine. This is a brand new replica machine. It's an all metal machine made by, made by Mauser in India. And it's a fantastic machine. It's not necessarily a machine for someone who wants to start out in chain stitch, but if you're already using a chain stitch machine, this would be your next um, machine to get to up, up your game a little bit. So um, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about what I've done with this machine since it arrived a couple days ago. I did make an unboxing video and it's on my YouTube channel, Chain Stitch Embroidery. So if you wanna see unboxing and how to put this machine together, which is the same for this machine or a regular chain stitch machine, please check out my other videos. I also have videos on oil maintenance, how to thread and stitch and get started and set up your machine on my YouTube channel. So, um, let me just also give a shout out um, to the Facebook group. Um, oh, sorry, shadow. Uh, Chain Stitch Embroidery Machine Singer 114W103 Cornelli and more. This is a Facebook group with people from all around the world that um, has people together to ask questions, learn more about chain stitch and also Irish embroidery and any other kinds of sort of creative um, fiber arts out there. So if you want to ask questions, um, the Facebook group is a good place to do that, to connect and ask questions. I'm, I'm still learning myself, and there are definitely people in the Facebook group that know more and can be very helpful. So, okay, back to this machine. So what I have done with this machine since it got out of the box is, um, and I'm just going to, I'm going to move on and I'm going to talk based upon people already having experience on a regular chain stitch machine. Okay, so if you're sitting here going like, what is that? I don't know what she's talking about. Please go back to my YouTube channel and watch some of my other videos with the red Mauser machine or my Singer machine. 
and um, that talks about more basic stuff. So what I've done since getting this out of the box is I have gone um, underneath and I have um, taken off my tension device and I have smoothed out the tension device with 400 grit sandpaper, the discs and the shaft that the thread passes over and the, the, the pin that the thread passes off, off or over, I guess, also. And that's about it that I've done with this machine. It, <clears throat> excuse me, it came out of the box with the attachments on. So I haven't really done anything up here. I did take off my needle plate because I like to use three threads and I, I use my um, just regular household drill and drill bits and I made bigger holes in the needle plate because I like to do three threads. And then I smoothed the entire uh, hole that I made. I made like four different size holes. <laughs> I think the biggest one was one eighth. Um, I smoothed them with two, 120, 220, and 400 grit sandpaper. And then I just ran some um, chain stitch. So I have my my green thread down here, and I ran some chain stitches, and they came out really nice. So now that I've got the chain stitch set up and running good, I put this spool on here, and then what I wanna talk about is this spool and, and what it does. So basically, um, you put this spool on this holder and then on, on the bottom right here, this, this is actually a nut that rotates this thing here and it's a tension device and it raises or lowers the bottom of this spool holder. So it increases or decreases tension on the spool. Okay. There's a little leaf spring in the top here that the spool presses up against that increases or decreases the tension on the spool. So all you do is um, put your spool in the holder, um, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, well, basically, you just pull down, I guess I'll show you now. You just pull down on this side. There's a little arm that goes underneath. You pull down on this side, and then you um, rotate the arm out, and the spool comes off, okay? So all you do is rotate the arm back, and it catches the spool. And then this screw here, which is, I guess, a nut, this nut here, there's a spring in this thing that keeps it um, up. So to increase or decrease the tension, you just rotate this nut here. And then you just put the arm down, put, put your spool on, and I got my thread a little tangled up there. But, and, uh, doing this one handed, you rotate the arm back and, and you're in. Um, okay, so I've got to get my thread out of the way there. Then you just put your thread through here and then rotate my handle. You put it through one of the holes in here and then down through the hole at the bottom and then you start sewing. And what this does it's connected to gears, which are connected to the lower shaft. And every time the needle goes up and down, this entire thing rotates one rotation. Okay, this machine is, is kind of a copy of a Singer 114W120, um, which is very similar to a Cornelli L. And um, I happen to have a Cornelli L machine so um, that's sitting right here. I'm kind of messing around with that. Um, so I'm kind of doing some comparisons between the Cornelli L and, and this Mauser here. Um, I can tell you that they're basically the same machine. Um, I mean, they operate the same way, except the Mauser has a few additional things. One is that to operate the top spool, you don't need the attachment contraption that hangs on the outside. You just put the top spool right right on top here and you're good to go. But I'll cover that later. Um, but that's one thing. And then the other thing, it has a, a lever here, which you can use to disengage the um, the wrapping function. I, I don't know when that um, was introduced in the vintage machines. I, I really don't know, but you can disengage and engage the wrapping function with this lever. And then also you get one additional inch of space here between the needle and the the arm, um, which you do not have with the uh, Cornelli L, at least with the older 
Cornelli L that I have that has the external springs. So anyway, so what did I do? So I put my spool in and I'll do another video and show you this in action in a second, but I just want to talk about what I did. So basically, um, I put the machine in, I set it up, I got it making chain stitches. Then I literally just sat down and I put the spool in, like I said, and then I adjusted the tension so when you pull on it, it I, I'm, I got it caught up now, but I'll show you that later. So when you pull on it, there's this light tension. Then I put it through the hole here, and then I put it down here through this hole and pulled it out. Then I just started stitching. So this right here is, honest to God, my first stitches on this machine with two threads. So there's a chain stitch coming up from the bottom, and then I added this cord in. They just both happen to be green. I'll, I'll switch colors for the second part of the video showing this in operation. So you can see that I have the um, the cord on the top and the chain stitch on the bottom. <laughs> Sorry, I've got a runny nose. And then so I started stitching and the thick cord is the, the wrapping cord. So I just started stitching. Now I had previously made sure my chain stitch was working very well. So I come over here and I don't know, you know what the heck is going on. Um, here the cord is too loose, right? So I went in, sorry, um, I went in the, the cord, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna call that the cord, and I'm gonna call the other one the chain stitch. So the cord was too loose because it's leaving loops. So I tightened the cord, and then, and I'm telling you, this is just all my first stitches right here. So I tightened the cord, and then you can see here the cord got really tight, and then I don't know what I was doing, maybe I, I, I guess the cord got tight, and then I loosened it again, and then I tightened it again, and then it got tighter. So now you can see here that the cord is pulling the chain stitch, and this is what we call the ray stitch. There's other names for it, but I'm just gonna call it the ray stitch. So it leaves like rays that look like the sun. So I came on around, and I, I think I, I tightened it a little more, and actually I think what I did here was, I you can see my rays were short here, and my rays started to get longer, <laughs> I loosened my tension on my chain stitch. I, I think here I may have tried to tighten my tension on my chain stitch. So I went under the table and I loosened the tension on my chain stitch and then that made the green cord pull the chains up and start to give me these rays. So then I kept going along and I think that maybe I loosened the tension on the chain stitch a little more so you can see the rays started to get longer and then I came on around and then I went around here and now I'm checking that it's making rays and I, I think I loosened the tension on the bottom on the chain stitch more and I'm checking to see that my rays are coming out nice and I can go in both directions and it seems to be working. And um, so that is, that is how I adjusted the ray stitch. So you should be getting nice um, rays in both directions. So now I'm gonna, um, I'm going to call it doing the ray stitch and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix my bobbin thread and then I'll change the bottom color so we can see better what's happening and I'll give you a, a demo of this, this machine in action. But I have to say I, I love this machine. It's very nice and um, if I was going to use it on a daily basis I'm going to think it's better than the Cornelli L because it has the additional one inch and I don't have to deal with the gears on the outside. Okay, so hang on, I'll put you in the um, holder and I'll come back with a demo and let me change the, uh, the color of the thread. Okay, so now I have you in my phone holder and um, I have changed the bottom, <clears throat> excuse me, changed the chain stitch thread to a black color and I have the green um, cord on the spool and it is pretty tight to pull off the spool. So we'll see what happens. Um, but you have to make it tight off the spool and loose from below to get the ray stitch. So I'm just gonna start here. I'm starting with my machine where I left it um, pointing away from me. And I'm gonna hold both ends to start. And um, let's see. So to get the ray stitch effect, you have to make, oh, Okay, uh, so my bottom thread broke, 
or no, it came undone. I think I need more tension on the bottom. So after changing colors, um, sometimes you have to fiddle with your thread. Hang on, I'll be right back. Okay, so I increased the tension on the black thread uh, one turn and I just pulled that, that out. So we'll start again um, and see. Okay, so now I'm getting a raised stitch. <clears throat> And you don't get it, <coughs> excuse me, you don't get it if you don't turn a circle. So, that, I mean, this is literally uh, all the ray stitches I have done since this machine showed up at my door. Um, this and now this. So, changing from the green thread to the black thread, I just increased my tension one turn. And then now I'm going to look at this and fine tune it. And I can see that my black thread is not very happy right now, but it's working. Um, I do have a little bit of previous experience doing the raised stitch, so um, I know what I'm kind of looking for. That does give me a little bit of an advantage here, but basically it's doing very well in the clockwise direction, and then I'll do a counterclockwise I'm sorry, my nose is running. Um, I'll do a counterclockwise direction. Clockwise. It looks like something is roughing my thread up just a touch. I don't know what that is. Um, I might need to uh, try to source that and fine tune or smooth out whatever that is. But basically, um, this is the raised stitch. I'm sorry I'm like going so fast so basically the needle goes down and up and this entire thing spins needle goes down and up and this entire thing spins needle goes down and up and this entire thing spins down and up I'm sorry I realize I just started off way too fast there so um let's take a look at this stitch so you can see where the black is the chain stitch from below and it's wrapping around and the green is the cord. So that's the ray stitch. Um, again, this is my first time doing it um, on this machine, but you can see uh, it's pretty cool. Um, I think that personally, maybe the, the one color looks better because it's, like smoother, but I want to switch colors so you can really see what's going on here. Um, I'm not real happy with the little bit of furry stuff that's happening here, so I probably need to go in and check. Um, I, I don't actually have the right nipple in right right now. Um, this is a nipple for cording that is what you put thread down from the top, so that um, might not be helping but I just didn't change it from when it came out of the box. But that's a nipple for cording when you put stuff down from the top, and that will be my next video um, after this one. But I just wanted to show you how you do the ray stitch, and I am coming to you from my uh, fancy Mauser International um, machine that does five kinds of stitches. And so um, that's my next thing that I've done out of the box. And I thank you for watching.